Hey everybody, it's Coach Mark and I'm making this video today to share with you what my weekly nutritional habits are. Um, with the start of the new year, people tend to make some changes to their lifestyle, try to improve things and a lot of the time they're working on their diet, on what they eat. And we also have the transformation challenge at Orange Cherry that will be starting soon. So I thought what better time than now to share some of that information with you. Before I go to details and what I'm doing at the moment, I want to share a little bit of my history and how I got to the point I'm at right now and, and why I might be doing the things I'm doing right now when it comes to nutrition. So for me, things really got going, you know, kick-started back in 2012, 2013 when I was a student at, at Citrus College and uh, I ended up taking a nutrition class and that's where I learned about calories, and macros, you know, fat, carbs, protein, all that, and started understanding food a little bit more, but it was just the start, really. Um, where things got going a little bit more was in 2016, when I downloaded my fitness pal, and I started tracking what I was eating, because at the time, my goal was to bulk up. I was trying to be big, I was trying to be a bodybuilder, uh, and for that, I needed to put on weight. I always struggled putting on weight in my life, so, my goal was to get around 4,500 to 5,000 calories a day. When mind you, I was probably eating around 2,000, 2,500 at the time. So I was doubling my intake. And uh, I did it uh, really probably not the best way you could do that. I did it by cooking three different types of meals. One of them was like tilapia and pasta, it was uh, chicken, broccoli and rice. And the third had to be something with ground beef and, and rice, something like that. And um, I did that for several weeks. And I, I gained weight, I gained uh, like 10 pounds in a month. Uh, but I quickly got sick of eating the way I was eating, eating the same three meals week after week after week. I started really hating eating food. And sometimes it would take me like over an hour, close to an hour to eat a meal. Uh, and I knew that was gonna be sustainable. Plus I didn't really like the way I was feeling when I was trying to bulk up. I wasn't doing it the right way anyway, but nonetheless, what I did is I, I made sure that I hit my calories by tracking it, so I knew I was getting what I'm supposed to get, and I was getting a ton of protein, which at the time was my goal too, to get like over 200 grams of protein easily. It was probably getting close to 300 grams, to be honest. So I was eating a lot of meat and getting really stuffed doing it. I got away from that, and I kept learning also about nutrition. At Cal State Fortune, I took a a nutrition and performance class. I also got certified to through Precision Nutrition, which is a certification that allowed me to learn how to work with uh, clients, you know, the psychology behind uh, food, you know, creating habits and, and all that good stuff that, that really helped me uh, work with a lot of people and that still does help me. And I also read uh, Lane Norton's book, uh, Fat Loss Forever, which helped me learn a little bit more again about how to structure meals and, and what we're looking at uh, when it comes to macros and calories and all that. In that time, I still use my fitness bar on and off. And uh, there's, a, there's a stretch of six months where I was using it and really trying to, you know, find the right calories and protein for me to, to become really lean. And, and I did find kind of like the secret formula that worked for me, which is to get my calories around 2,800 to 3,000 and to make sure I get about 200 grams of protein plus or minus. And when I do that, when I stick to those macros, I tend to get really lean. Around, I'm usually around 12 to, you know, 15% body fat because of my habits already. I have, you know, meals that I know are healthy, you know, that have enough protein and have whole foods. So I usually cook those throughout the year anyway for lunch and dinner, those are most of my meals I have morning routine, you know, that's changed over time, but now it's been a shake for a couple of years that I'm consistent with and that works really well within my macros. And then I have a snack that, that I like to eat that really also is somewhat healthy, you know, not, not the worst and not the best still. And so when I do that year round, I'm, I'm at a decent place. And I'm not being really picky on exactly the amount of calories I'm eating. I might be snacking a little bit more than usual, you know, I might go out a little bit more um, I'm not as precise, but I have such a good base that I can stay in a nice place. But again, with the start of the new year, I thought, well, what better uh, time than to go back on it and be really diligent about 
tracking everything I do and making sure that I am as precise as I can be. So not only am I tracking my uh, food through my fitness pal again, but one, what I'm doing that's a little bit different too is that the meals that I'm used to eating now, I'm putting those, those recipes on my fitness pal and I'm actually making sure that they're giving me the right macros that I want. And for me to figure out those, those macros, how, much, how many calories I want in my lunch and my dinner, how much protein I want, uh, I needed to kind of work backwards and look first at what, if there's anything that I, I do every single day. And I do actually. So what I do every day is I make a morning shake. I've been doing that for, uh, I've done it on and off for years. And for the last two years, I've been super consistent. I really enjoy starting my day with that shake for one, uh, it has plenty of protein and has all the nutrients I would want in a first meal. Um, it's easy and quick to make and, and, and that, that was a big thing because I didn't have time to cook in the morning and all that so I can take it with me. So uh, every morning or every night, the night before, I use my scale, uh, I put my shaker bottle on it and then I tear it and I put the ingredients. So I always put like 75 grams of strawberries, you know, 50 grams of blueberries, uh, I put some milk, my protein powder, and green powder. Anyway, I put all the ingredients. I've actually posted a video on YouTube that you can check out if you're interested in seeing what's in there. And and that's there every day. So I know I can already log that every day and what I'm going to have. Another thing I'm going to have every day, or at least 90% of the time, is uh, my daily snack that uh, what I do when I go buy the ingredients, I already put it uh, in a tub the day, a meal prep. I put everything uh, uh, into into separate containers for seven days. Makes it so much easier. So that's pretty consistent too. It's always the same amount of nuts, you know, the same amount of yogurt. Uh, what might change is the fruit, you know, but I always like about 100 grams of a fruit. Uh, always a little piece of Swiss chocolate with it uh, and, and maybe a little drizzle of honey. And that snack has been the go-to for me because I do love sugar, I, I love chocolate, and I need that craving kind of satisfied every day. So I need to find something, you know, that was gonna fall somewhat within my macros, you know, and, and that, that, that wasn't gonna make, put me behind. So this has been a, a great move for me. All right, so after figuring out that I'm having my shake and my snack every day, I log those in the app and already had my calories set around 2,800 to 3,000 and my protein set at 200. When I logged those two in, it gave me what was left over which uh, was about 1600 calories and about 100 grams of protein. And I'm gonna divide that by two because I wanna have a lunch and a dinner as well. So my total that I figured that I needed to have for each lunch and dinner was a meal that's around 800 calories and around 50 grams of protein. So I worked backwards to find out those numbers. There was one thing I wanted to add too, to save you some time when you use my fitness pal is that, for example, for my morning shake, what I do is I log all the ingredients under uh, breakfast for a day, for example, and on the bottom right, you have the three dots. So if you click on those three dots, it says save as a meal. So when you do that, if you end up using the exact same recipe the next day, you can simply uh, click on add food, and then click on my meals and it's going to pop up and you can just click the plus and it adds it there. The thing is with that one, it's going to add all the items separately. So it, in one way, that's cool because if, for example, you didn't have banana on your shake that day, once you log it, you can simply delete the, the banana out of all the items. Now it can get also pretty clogged if there's a lot of items in, in, in your, your meal. So that's the big difference is when you create a recipe, first off, if it's a recipe that you create in bulk, you're gonna put all the ingredients, right? I'm gonna put all the rice I'm making for the, maybe the five servings I'm having, all the chicken and all that. It's a little bit different. And when you log it too, instead of popping each item uh, separately, it's just gonna tell you the name of the recipe and it's gonna put the, the calories and the macros in it. It's not gonna show you each item. So doing a meal on my fitness spa or a recipe, is a little bit different, just so you know. So I use typically the meal from my shake and my snack, because they could be little variations, but my meals, I'm gonna keep them, uh, or I should say my recipes, I'm gonna keep them super consistent. But what I started doing at this moment is taking 
those recipes that I was already making, but that I was making without really, um, you know, kind of ballparking how much, for example, rice or chicken I was having in a meal versus buying the exact amount. So now that I figured out that I needed 800 calories <clears throat> per meal, excuse me, and 50 grams of protein, I logged all the ingredients. And I'll give you the, the first recipe that I did this week uh, was my barbecue chicken. So I go on my fitness bar again, I go on the recipe I created and I cr uh, click on edit recipe so I can see all the ingredients. So for that one, I needed vegetable broth. I needed uh, two cans of black beans, uh, fire roasted salsa, boneless chicken breast, um, sour cream, feta, and, and rice. So I put all the ingredients right in there. And then I went, clicked the up arrow, um, and decided how many servings I wanted it to be worth. And I wanted it to be worth five servings. Because you gotta understand, I also like to be efficient with time. And uh, I don't mind eating the same meal several times in a week. So I cook in bulk, and I cook for four to five meals. I think, man, that's that's a lot of eating the same meal, but you also have to understand I don't eat it every single week. I eat it for one week, four to five times, and then I don't touch that meal usually for a good four to five weeks. So I don't really get bored of it. I'm actually excited to eat that meal again when the time comes. So for me, that's I found something that works. Might not be for you, but I'm telling you, it's, it's great because it's super time uh, uh, efficient. Once you got that routine down, it ends up saving you a lot of time and it helps you reach your goals. Therefore, I started putting all the ingredients in, like I said, and I adjusted some of the ingredients for it to fit my macros. For it to be around 800 calories, I had to reduce a little bit of the rice that I thought I was gonna use, um, bumping up a little bit the chicken to get the protein that I want. And now I have uh, that whole list that I need. So when I'm gonna go run groceries again for that meal, I don't need to think about how much I need of each ingredient. I just look at the app and I get exactly that and I know exactly what I'm getting out of it. So it's super convenient. The whole cooking this week that uh, for my three meals took me a little over three hours, which I was really on top of it for this one. Those were meals that were quickly done. Sometimes take a little bit longer if I have a meal that has to cook in the crock pot, but overall uh, it's gonna be a time saver. And I didn't like put everything in containers the same way. So for example, my barbaco chicken meal, I have the chicken, the beans and the rice in separate containers. And what I do is when I eat that meal, I'll put it on a plate, I heat it up, or you could heat it up in the microwave, I like to heat it up in the oven. Uh, and what I will add to that meal is um, my, uh, my uh, feta cheese, okay? And that's something I wasn't exactly sure how much I would want of it, but I estimated I would want a serving size. So I had already made that list before I ate that meal and ended up working out perfect. The serving size were good. Uh, here for that salsa, three serving sizes is what I wanted, you know, to be happy with the meal and to fit my macros. And where I, where I made a little bit of a mistake uh, is I thought, oh, maybe I'll take one serving size of this, uh, of this light sour cream, which is two tablespoons. But honestly, for me, it cuts it a little bit short. And since it's not a super high calorie food for a serving, I mean, it's 35 calories, it's it's okay. I could afford adding a second uh, serving to it. So that's a little adjustment I made on the app. I added basically five more servings uh, to the whole recipe since I'm gonna have one extra uh, for five days. My second meal that I made was my pasta bolognese. So for this one, I put the pasta and the meat sauce separately, basically. Um, and what I had to do to know exactly how much to take is I weighed the whole uh, uh, serving of pasta or in the whole recipe that I cooked. I weighted it and I divided that weight by five. So I had the one serving size because it's, it's gonna be worth five serving sizes. So, and I wrote it on this piece of paper. So I know, okay, I'm gonna scoop out 230 grams of this pasta on a plate and I'm gonna cover it with uh, 325 grams of this cooked meat to, to hit what I need. And there's one more thing that I have with this recipe and that's some cheese. So I'm gonna grate some cheese on it. So what I do indeed is I have the ski at the table, I weigh it, or maybe I put a little plate on it and then weigh it on it. I see how much it weighs, obviously without the wrapping and all that. I grate it, put it back on the plate. Am I at 30 grams? No, not yet. Boom, grate it a little bit more. And, and like that, I'm being really precise. It might, again, sound like a lot, but you know what? I don't want to cut any quarters. Uh, I want to know exactly what's happening. If you're doing something at least 
close to that and you're weighing a lot of your food still, especially the high calorie foods like chips. Chips is another one that uh, one of my guilty pleasures that I like to have, especially if I have a salad because the salad is lower in calories. So I've made this uh, tilapia salad uh, as well as one of my meals. That's one of those where I cooked a few items. Uh, I cooked the tilapia already, made hard boiled eggs as well. So that's prepared. So when I want to have my salad, I just boom, put the spinach out, weigh it. I put my tomato, uh, I put my avocado, I bought small avocados. I already tested how much avocado is in a small. I have uh, a little bit of cheese also, and I have my chips. So my chips is really important. Again, that I weigh a portion size every time because a portion size a serving, as sad as it looks in a plate, a serving size is not a lot and it's easy to overdo it. And it's not a lot in size, but it's a lot in calories. It's like 150 calories per serving size. So imagine you could easily eat two serving sizes of, of chips. It's, it doesn't even look like a lot. So that's why it's so important, especially high calorie foods that you use a plate uh, or a, a scale, I should say, and that you weigh it before you have it so that you're not cheating yourself because you will overdo those foods. Those are my three meals for the week and that's how I'm gonna go about it for a few weeks and see how long I last. Another big advantage of me logging everything is that um, if I'm having snacks, or I'm going out to eat and stuff like that, I'll see it immediately when I log in and, and it will hold me back from overdoing it. So for example, here I have some sweet macaroons from Switzerland that I would have probably already finished by now if it wasn't for me logging them. You know, logging it just really makes me realize, okay, you already had a couple of those today. We're not gonna go for a third or fourth round right now. And we're not gonna forget that we already had a couple rounds because again, it's very easy to forget what you've eaten in a day if you're, if you're not recording. And so that's why I recommend everybody to try that. This is basically how I like to work with clients is that I have them track their food on my fitness pal and uh, I teach them about food, about what substitutions could be made, what we're looking at when we're reading the macronutrients of a food. What I want for anybody that works with me is to really understand what it takes to get to those goals because it's, it's not easy work. There's no secret formula, secret diet. At the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, it's paying attention to what you're eating. It's planning ahead, you know, and it's also making some sacrifices at times. Although I'll tell you the way I eat, I really enjoy the way I eat now compared to what I did back in college. And, and it's a pleasure to eat the meals that I make and I don't feel restricted, to be honest. That's what I would want any of my clients to get to basically, is to, to get to a spot where they're happy with the way they're eating and the way they're looking thanks to, to, to their, their lifestyle. All right, and it's a wrap for this video. I hope that you found it helpful, that you've learned something new. And if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I hope to be doing some more videos around nutrition and fitness in the future. So I'll see you then.